a typical investment problem as a algebra word problem. And again, just to keep in mind, we're dealing with these types of problems. Of course, if you're going to do an investment problem, you want to make sure you understand that the interest earned is equal to the principal invested times the interest rate at which you invested at. And let's take a look at our example. A total of $6,000 was invested, a portion at 6%, and the remainder at 8%. The total amount of interest earned, oh, and I'm missing a T right here, so let me put that in there. Interest earned was $450. How much was invested at each rate? All right, so how do we start? Let X equals. Now, it's going to equal what? Well, we had $6,000 invested, some of it at 6%, and the remainder at 8%. So, let X equal the amount invested at 6%. Then how do we express the amount invested at 8%? Well, if the total was 6,000 and X was invested, the amount invested at 6%, then the difference, 6,000 minus X, is equal to the amount invested at 8%, right? 6,000 minus X is what's left over, so that's the amount invested at 8%. Now they tell us that we earned a total of $450. So the interest earned with my investment at 6% and the interest earned with the amount invested at 8% should add up to $450. So interest earned at 6% plus interest earned at 8% should add up to the total of $450. And how do I express how much interest I've earned? Coming back over here, it's the principal times the rate. So principal is x, the rate is 6%, so x times 6% is the amount that I earned at 6%. Plus principal times interest, so 6,000 minus x times 8%, is the amount that I've earned at 8% and added, to, added those two together, I should get $450 of earnings. Okay, now I'm ready to go ahead and solve this equation. First, I'm going to replace the 6% by its decimal equivalent. So X times 0 0.06, that's the decimal equivalent of 6%. I do the same over here. 6,000 minus X times 0.08. That's the decimal equivalent of 8%, and that should add up to 450. Now we'll go ahead and solve the problem. To do that, I want to first get rid of the decimal places. So to do that, I multiply both sides of the equation by 100, because I want to move the decimal place over two places. And of course, whatever I do to the left side, I have to multiply that to the right side as well. Okay, 100 times this, well, 100 times 0.06 is give me 6, that's x times 6, plus 100 times this, when I multiply this, I get 8 instead of 0 0.08, so this gives me 6,000 minus x times 8, and that equals 450, with two more zeros, because now I'm multiplying that times 100, so I get 45,000. Now we'll go ahead and get rid of parentheses and multiply everything together, so this is 6x, plus 8 times 6,000 is 48,000, minus 8 times x is 8x, and that equals 45,000. All right, next thing I need to do is uh, move everything that's not associated with x to the right side, so move this to the right side, and so I end up with 6x minus 8x on the left side equals 45,000, and when I move the 48,000 to the, to the right side, I go across the equal sign, I have to change the sign, so that becomes a minus 48,000. Now I combine like terms, 6x minus 8x is minus 2x, equals 45,000 minus 48,000 is minus 3,000. And finally, I divide both sides of the equation by the numerical coefficient of x, or the negative 2, negative 2, so x equals 1,500.
All right. If that's correct, I can come back up here and say, okay, if X is the amount invested at 6%, that means I invested $1,500 at 6%. And 6,000 minus X, that's 6,000 minus 1,500. That gives me 4,500. So 4,500 at 8%. And now, just to make sure we didn't make any mistakes, how much interest did we earn in each case? Okay, if I invest $1,500 at 6%, that will earn me $60, $90. And if I invest $4,500 at 8%, that gives me $36, that gives me $3,360. And does that add up to 450? It certainly does. So I did it correctly. All right, you always want to make sure that you do this correctly. Now, if you said, well, what do you do over here? I didn't quite get that. Well, what I quickly did is I applied this equation right here. I took the principal, so I said $1,500 times the 6%, which is 0 0.06. When I multiply these two together, I get 90. And over here, I took principal times rate, so I took the 4,500 times 0.08, quickly did that in my head and said, ah, 360, together it adds up to 450.